So this tapestry is from the Arts Council collection, which is a national loan collection of artwork. We have just over 8,000 artworks and these six tapestries are part of that collection. Um, and they've been touring around the country, uh, well, and internationally actually, over the last 10 years. So it's a bit of an anniversary year for them. They're 10 years old. Um, and they've been going to, they've been uh, from the north of Scotland down to Penzance and everywhere in between. And now we're installing them in Salisbury Cathedral, which is this incredibly um, special and interesting environment for them as we see them in this new light within the cathedral setting. Particular relationship between these tapestries made by Grayson Perry and a building like this because um, many of the uh, images and forms um, and titles in this sequence of tapestries many of them are inspired by and based upon um, historic sacred art what is great about these tapestries is they do have a, a bit of a timeless quality to them. I mean, so much has happened in the last 10 years since these tapestries were made, but they're still so incredibly relevant. Grace and Perry's subject matter is um, social division and class division. Now, the, these tapestries were made before um, we experienced Brexit, before we experienced the pandemic, the cost of living crisis, and the war in Ukraine. Uh, nowadays, uh, we're more conscious than ever of the differences and divisions within our society. I think more so than when these, um, these tapestries were made. We're standing in front of a tapestry called the Adoration of the Cage Fighters. In a church, you might expect to see the Adoration of the Magi, the wise men who come to visit Jesus um, and bring him gifts. But Grayson Perry has taken these um, great examples of sacred art and worked with them. Um, they tell the story of Tim Rakewell. Um, he starts off in a working class life. Um, over in Sunderland, uh, Grayson visited three places across uh, England to research these tapestries. So initially he went to Sunderland. So we see Tim with his mother. Um, and then as he gets a bit older, he goes to university and he gets a girlfriend and he transitions into middle class life and we see him attending his first dinner party um, over sort of towards tapestry three and four. Here we have um, Tim in sort of middle class life. So we've got Tim over here um, on the sofa with his child. Um, I would say to people that come to visit the tapestries, there is a dog in each one of them and I often tell people to look out for the dog because we see um, the dog's life sort of echo Tim's life as well. Um, and then he gets his career and he makes a, a fortune in a, with an internet company, with a computer company, um, and he starts to sort of progress in his life. And then as we get to the latter part of the tapestries, we see him uh, enter the sort of the peripheries of upper class life. Um, but unfortunately, his company goes bust, and it's a, a bit of a sad to enter this very vibrant story where he's in a tragic car crash. Um, but the story is sort of a modern retelling of uh, William Hogarth's A Rake's Progress. Um, and we see the format here. I mean, I often tell people it's a little bit like a comic book because one tapestry leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to the next. Um, and it follows that format that Hogarth uh, did in talking about sort of social situations of Hogarth's time and, and now Grayson's applied them to contemporary British culture. I'm overjoyed that the work is here and I hope it will be enjoyed by many, many people. Um, this is Salisbury's Cathedral. It's here to serve the people of this city, this region. Uh, and we hope that in bringing this spectacular art by you know, one, of our, one of our most loved contemporary British artists, by bringing it here and displaying it here, uh, we hope that it will reach a, a wide audience and will be enjoyed by very, very many.